Last week, I hit a very special milestone. My channel has finally gained its first thousand subscribers. So, first off, thank you to everyone who's supported me so far on this journey, and if you're not already subscribed, maybe you can be part of that second thousand. I thought I should do something at least a little bit special to celebrate the milestone, and I know that YouTube has awards for the much bigger ones. So, I've printed out a plan, I'm applying some double-sided sticky tape to attach it to this piece of oak, oak left over from the spice rack project from last year. And here it is! Making a wooden play button plaque seemed like an appropriate celebration given that I do a bit of DIY on this channel, in between all the gaming. So yes, the wood is a lot bigger than the template, so the first job is to shorten it a bit. For this, I'm going to risk the jigsaw, even though I'm aware that it has a bad habit of not cutting in an entirely straight line, or keeping its blade perfectly vertical. But this cut is very approximate. I want to cut the wood down to about the right size, then I can tidy it up again afterwards. Speaking of tidying up, I've decided that the easiest way to get a perfect straight cut on a piece of wood like this is to clamp a known straight edge to it as a guide, and then run my router along the edge of it with a flush trim bit. Flush trim bits are really clever. They have a bearing on them which runs up against your guide, ensuring that the cut follows it perfectly, with a blade directly under it to cut through the wood. And unlike the jigsaw, the blade stays perfectly vertical. So to use this, I clamp the straight edge to the wood with G-clamps, which are much stronger than my quick-release clamps, and then use the easy clamps to hold the workpiece to the table. I can then run the router along the edge of the workpiece and completely cover myself in wood shavings. <laughs> Lovely. Once one side's done, I can then re repeat the procedure with the other three. The hardest, but most important part about making cuts like this, is keeping the router perfectly flat against the top of the workpiece, so you don't do this. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the wood is slightly thicker than the router bit is deep, so I need to do a second pass, but once again, I can reference it easily off the cut I've already made, this time using a flush trim bit with the bearing on the other end, and finish it off. Now we have the difficult part, the, the part I've not really done before. The YouTube plaques have an indented area for the, the screen of the YouTube logo, with a triangular play button part sticking out. This is the opposite way around to the older versions of the uh, plaques, which had a more rounded screen sticking out and a recessed play button. Once again, this seemed like a job for the router, so I fitted a small bit, plunged a hole, and then started to enlarge it. The sawdust really collected in the hole, but came out with a little bit of encouragement. Once I had a bit of a hole made, I switched over to a larger bit and started to really cut out the waste. Removing bulk waste like this was relatively easy and is one of the things I believe a router is designed for. I just had to make sure I plunged the bit in to the right depth, but pushing to the bottom of the existing hole made this relatively easy. The larger bit allowed me to take more wood out more quickly and soon I had a rough approximation of the shape of the screen. Unfortunately, this is where it started to get a lot more difficult. I'd been hoping that I'd be able to move the router relatively easily and follow along the lines printed on the paper freehand but this was made harder by a number of factors. The lines were quite hard to see with the router in place, and it was very hard indeed to move the router as precisely as I needed to for this. I think it was also made slightly harder because oak is quite a tough, hard, dense wood. I persevered anyway, working to get the cut as neat and accurate as I could, but it was very hard work. I managed this, this rough approximation, but I wasn't really happy with the quality of the work. While I thought about how to fix the edges, I decided to neaten the project up a bit as a whole by, by rounding over the front edges of the plaque. For this, I used a roundover bit, which is similar to a flush trim bit in that it has a bearing to keep it in the right place, but it has a curved blade instead of a straight one, so this gives you a smooth curve when you run it along a corner. Now that the main cuts were done, I started sanding the front to make sure I'd removed all the glue and uh, from, the, from the double sided sticky tape, and it was all nice and smooth. Sanding always takes forever, so I won't subject you to all of it. I then manually sanded inside the, the screen part with sandpaper, attempting to, to smooth it out and make it look neat and even, but with very limited success. It was very fiddly and very difficult to get in there with any sort of force and any sort of being able to scrape back and forth. I did think of using the straight edge to neaten up the uh, triangle, which helped a lot though. At this point, I was running out of time and patience and, and didn't really have any great ideas for improving the concave part of the project, so I decided to stop sanding there. A real play button plaque has a, uh, has a matte front plate and is shiny in the concave part, but given my difficulties with the sanding, I decided to do it the other way around, so I carefully masked off the dip and sprayed a generous layer of varnish over the rest of it, which really helped with the colour. 
It's now basically finished because I don't think there's much more I can do with it, but I'll admit that I'm not entirely satisfied with the finish down there. I had a couple of ideas of ways I could have done it differently and probably better. I should have started out making a template out of plywood or, or something similar to get the shape of the screen cut out in some wood that I could, I could cut straight through and work a bit more easily, probably with a jigsaw and a file. This would have given me something to run a flush trim bit up against and hopefully would have given me a much more accurate cutout. Another possibility would have been to make it out of two pieces of wood. Having the back as a separate piece would have allowed me to make it perfectly smooth by sanding it before I fitted it and would have allowed me to make it shiny as well. I could even have used a different type of wood to get a two colour effect, perhaps by routing a space in the back for it to fit into. Maybe I'll make another one for a future milestone and use some of these ideas so, so it looks a bit better. But for now at least, I've made a thing, learned, about some, learned a bit more about router techniques and I've got some ideas for the future. If you've got any suggestions of ways I could have done this better, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely still a beginner when it comes to routing, so you might be able to help me. For now though, thank you for helping me get my channel to this point, and please come back to all of the future content to help me grow even further. As Factorio streams continuing on Mondays, with Dyson Sphere programs starting up on Wednesdays, and videos with summaries and other things coming out around the weekends, covering lots of different topics. So, I'll see you there. Thanks for all your support.